Good morning, everybody. I'm Eureka John, and you're at Eureka Street Crypto, broadcasting from Leander, Texas. It is 6.24 in the morning, and uh, this is episode number 474, <clears throat> and it's July 6th on a Wednesday, 2022. Yep. And um, the fear listening on the audio version is probably episode 145. I started recording audio only podcasts and putting up on things like Spotify and Apple and Google uh, well in after I was already recording things daily um, on the, my video blog. But um, yeah, so I don't know why I, I started numbering them differently. I, just, I don't know. I did. And now here I am. So <laughs> didn't don't really plan much for for, for much of anything. Uh, sorry for the sound yesterday. I was listening to it on the way down to a job to my job and uh, it sounded terrible. And it's because I was experimenting with with um, some some live effects and, uh, you know, trying to make it sound better, but uh, that's what this podcast is all about, you know. Not only is it my morning brain dump of news and articles and podcasts I listen to and and books I read and ideas that I come up with, but it's also my sandbox to be able to play with audiovisual stuff and to test things out. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, this, this is not a formal podcast by any means. This is like literally just my experimental sandbox and a way to just kind of just try out new things and, and try to hone my skills without there being any pressure, any money on the line, no job on the line or anything like that. It's just me kind of dicking around and, uh, yeah. <clears throat> and then, so, and this is also my, my message in a bottle to the rest of the crypto and web three community. So some episodes might turn out really good. Good. And then some episodes might, might turn, turn out like, like total crap. crap. And, and it's, it's okay. okay. You know, you know I'm, I'm not, not going to go back and edit things. I'm not going to go back and try to polish it up um, because it's not the point. Like, I'm going to just like say, okay, that didn't work. And then move on, you know, and that, that's what a lot of people should do in life, I think. And it's what, well, it's what I should do in life, too. If you if you mess up, just like skateboarding, you know, if you don't make the trick right, you know, and, and you fall and you, you beat yourself up, just get up, dust yourself off and do it again and try to learn from, you know, what went wrong the time before. So, yeah, that, that's that. Um, so speaking, speaking of which, let me turn down the sound a little bit. It was kind of getting blasted out too. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, anyway, let's go over here to coin gecko and, uh, let me get this sound settled. Okay. And okay. Let me get to the coin gecko screen and let's check out and see what the market's doing. Let me refresh the old coin gecko. So coin gecko is a place where you can, it's like, you know, coin listings, you know, and, uh, there are thousands of coins, so it's not just Bitcoin and Ethereum and a couple other coins and Dogecoin and Shiba Inu. Um, it is lots and lots and lots of, of different tokens and lots of projects, lots of failed projects, um, lots of white papers and lots of ideas. That's one thing I love about the cryptocurrency space is there's just tons and tons of ideas out there for every possible thing you could imagine that uh, tokenization and blockchain could do and technology could do um, and people put it out on a white paper they issue a token they try to raise money um, most of this stuff um, is just trash <clears throat> and um, yeah a lot of it is just blatant scams and that's the thing about this crypto space. It is a space of innovation, but it's also a space where innovation occurs. There are lots of scammers and grifters or dreamers, uh, pipe dreamers, not necessarily dreamers. There are a lot of pipe dreamers. So even people with good intentions and uh, groups of people with good intentions trying to raise money for something. And it just turns out like, ah, you know, we tried this and yeah, just, uh, just, just didn't work out, you know? <laughs> so I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've heard that and how many times I've done that myself, you know, like to come up with some idea or project, you know, and, and yeah, you think it's an amazing idea and then you, 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 you lay it all out there and then you start working on it and the reality of some this or that sets in and you're just like, ah, and then it just kind of fizzles out. <clears throat> so, yeah, and that especially happens to happen on uh, sad, over weekends <laughs> at intoxicated parties. <laughs> Lots of people come up with with ideas <laughs> at three in the morning on a Saturday night, you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> like I could, I just see it now. The scenario, like two guys sitting there out on a balcony, you know, tooting some blow, and then sitting there talking about some amazing business idea, yelling in each other's faces about how amazing it's going to be, and then um, you know they wake up on Monday morning. After their weekend long bender, and uh, yeah, the idea never comes into fruition. That's kind of a lot of these tokens, like down here, you know, <laughs> seem like that. So, yeah, this that's just how it goes, man. In the crypto market, you have to watch out for that stuff and really just kind of learn discernment. You know, I first got into the crypto market in 2018, and everything sounded like an amazing idea. Um, I bought a little bit of every token I talked about. And uh, I kind of had like a, a Boy Scouts merit badge sash for just full of all these different token logos. And, um, you know, most of them have crashed to zero or, or are just totally worthless. So, you know, but ideas, they, they, they stimulate me and they excite me. So, you know, and then creativity, creativity stimulates and excites me. Okay. So anyway, so Bitcoin's at 20,000, um, up 1.6% from yesterday. So it's, it's been kind of hovering around 19 and 20,000, 21,000 the past couple weeks or so. Ethereum, right. The same thing around between like a thousand and 1200. Um, then we have the two, uh, uh, stable coins at a dollar right where they should be. So we have three stable coins in the top 10 now, uh, Binance, USD, Tether and USDC. And they're right at a dollar after that <clears throat> Terra USD depegging from a dollar. And we had USDD, the Tron stable coin depegging, depegging for a little bit from the dollar. It's nice to see stable coins at a dollar. So let's let's, let's celebrate that. Um, okay, and the Binance coin is at two thirty six forty five. Binance is one of the central centralized exchanges that's doing pretty well. I think Crypto.com is too. Hopefully, because I use Crypto.com for my on ramp. Um, but a lot of the centralized exchanges are suffering. And I've said this before on some past episodes here recently that I think there is a coordinated shadow attack on a lot of the players in the crypto market um, by, you know, whoever, whoever it is, whether it's by like Goldman Sachs and BlackRock or government agencies, uh, the SEC, whatever. But uh, people are finding these vulnerabilities and ways to short certain um, tokens and projects. And then it just starts the death spiral. It's happened with Celsius. It happened with Terra. It, it's happened with Bancor. It's happened with Voyager. Um, it, and so, yeah, uh, one by one. It's, now it's happening with BlockFi. Is it going to happen with Coinbase? I don't know. It's kind of teetering on it. You know, so... If you have your stuff on centralized exchanges, I highly advise you. And yes, this is financial advice. And I, this is the only financial advice I would ever give on anything is take your stuff off of centralized exchanges. Because the problem with centralized exchanges, and even Bancor had an issue with this, and it's not even a centralized exchange. But the problem with centralized exchanges is they own the keys to your crypto. So if suddenly they find themselves in a little bit of a pickle, a little precarious position, all they got to do is just lock it up. And uh, you can't withdraw or deposit or do anything um, on that. And they hold your funds. And if they go and solve it, they take their money, your money with them. And there's nothing that you can do. Um, it's, yeah, a lot of people are dealing with that with Celsius right now. Um, I think BitBoy is actually doing a whole lawsuit against Celsius. I, I mean, he was sitting there pumping up Celsius hard. Um, maybe it's kind of to cover his own ass. I don't know. But um, yeah, and BitBoy is the, the number one YouTuber and crypto YouTuber in the world at like over 100 million and uh, 1 million subscribers and stuff like that. So I don't know. Um, but yeah, him, him, and Alex Mashinsky, the, the CEO of Celsius, that they, uh, I think he was on Bitboy's show a few times, and yeah, I don't know, drama, drama, you know. Um, anyway, so let's see here, uh, XRP at thirty two cents, Cardano at forty five cents, Solana up four point four point zero percent, up four percent to thirty six oh three. The Doge um, staying stable at six cents, um, Polkadot. Uh, right there at uh, 688 and then the die decentralized stable coin and then shiba inu somebody recently bought a bunch of shiba inu i can't remember who it was but i saw a sale 
um, on Twitter, uh, a massive amount of Shiba Inu was bought recently. Um, so I don't know why anybody would want to buy that. But uh, hey, man, that's uh, just like their their deal. So live and let live. Um, <clears throat> okay, so uh, the, the Crypto.com token's up 1.4 token. Another token that's been pumping is the Leo token. It's at 585. It seems like none of all this stuff has really affected the Leo token. Um, anyway, I could, I did a few an episode on the Leo token um, a few months ago and why it was pumping and stuff like that and how it is connected to a previous exchange hack. And they, instead of reimbursing everybody um, the money that was recovered a few years later, um, in the meantime, after that hack, they gave everybody this Leo token. So if they ever recovered the money, they would, you know, the Leo token would accrue value through that, the, the found money. And it looks like that's what's happened. So, um, yeah, interesting story behind the Leo token. I would, I would recommend if you're kind of poking around projects to look into the Leo token and the history about it and then how it ties into that, uh, that uh, female rapper um, and the other guy who, you know, were laundering a bunch of the crypto money. And supposedly they were the ones that stole the money from that exchange. But uh, I don't think that they're smart enough to do so. Um, but yeah, it's, it's an amazing story. And it's, it's a pretty interesting story behind the Leo token. So I suggest you, you go you know, just kind of read up on it because it's fun and it's funny. It's a funny story. Um, anyway, um, speaking of funny, um, the uh, <clears throat> Abracadabra, I don't know if you ever got into abracadabra.money, wonderland.finance. Um, well, that was one of those um, Danny Sesta and um, um, Sifu, um, Xerox Sifu projects. And it was one of those where um, it's kind of you know, based around the whole idea of uh, protocol owned liquidity, you know, like ohm and all that stuff. And, um, you know, real high yields. Um, yeah, it ended up crashing as well. Um, but uh, so Wonderland basically went to zero, the time token and the magic internet money. I know I'll, to somebody who must be listening to this that doesn't know about all these projects, it's like, what the hell? Wonderland time magic internet money? What? What in the hell are you talking about? Well, anyway, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's as ridiculous as it sounds. Trust me. Um, but it just I, I saw this pop up. Wonderland passes vote to invest $25 million in Sifu Vision. I thought Wonderland was broke. And here they have, yeah, the Dow is still going. And um, they have $25 million to invest in Sifu Vision. Interesting. So here we go. Wonderland passed a vote to buy $25 million worth of Sifu Vision tokens. Sifu Vision is currently, ah, hold on. Sifu Vision is is cryptocurrency project founded by Sifu, Wonderland's former treasury manager. And if you don't know the story of Sifu, 0x Sifu, um, he is, he got doxxed as Michael Patron, and Michael Patron was one of the co-founders of the Quadriga Finance scandal that happened, um, you know, a long time ago, actually. In crypto years, it's like eons ago. And um, Gerald Cotton, the, the, the other partner, um, he went on vacation to India and died in quotes. Um, a lot of people say that he ran off with a, with the, the money, but, uh, basically Michael Patron months before that happened, um, you know, got away from the project, you know, he, he just, some things weren't going right and he distanced himself, but Michael Patron, you know, he's an ex felon, you know, in financial crimes and stuff like that, all the way going all the way back to early digital cash type of stuff. Um, but the thing is, is he went on a, and he basically became anonymous under Zero X Sifu after he did his time and did everything that he needed to do. And uh, he partnered with Danny Sesta. They created Wonderland Finance and a few other projects. And uh, he got doxxed. Zero X Sifu got doxxed as, you know, the Michael Patron. And uh, the community freaked out. And uh, basically they voted him out of the community and um, and then, you know, I mean, there, 
I did an entire episode on, you know, look, you know, you got to have an understanding mind and heart. Like, you know, the, everything that happened with Quadriga Finance was in the past and all his previous stuff. He he did his time. You can't sit there and hold that over somebody's head. And other people say, well, no, not if he's in charge of billions of dollars of people's money and stuff like that. He, he, you know, even if he is anonymous, you have to know who they are. Well, that's the spirit of DeFi is anonymity, anonymity and the idea that you can't can't use anybody's you know past or their skin color or anything like that against them there's no discriminatory uh, nature in defi there's not supposed to be and it's just basically on the present day performance and how things are are going and you know it's trustless that's what defi is supposed to be right that's what cryptocurrency is supposed to be so it kind of became like more than just you know oh my god he's you know michael patron it became this like larger meta question of you know when you have that much money in defi is it it, it, should there be some kind of know your customer or know your vendor type of process, you know, and then it brings back the same system we're trying to get away from is the credit system, you know. And um, so anyway, I guess he ended up getting back into Wonderland and the community seems to have, have embraced him back, which is good. Um, I mean, I, I if you can't obviously tell, I'm, I, I, kind, I like Sifu. And uh, I like Zero X Sifu, and I like the project that this new project that he's created. Um, after Wonderland crashed, he's created a project called Sifu Vision, which is basically just like a a uh, derivative token, I guess what you would call it, that tracks um, his his portfolio. So the guy, whatever you think about him um, from a moral perspective or whatever, the guy knows how to make money. You know, and so he formed a token that does nothing but just tracks his portfolio of investments. And uh, there's an entire community around it. So if you go to Discord and you can go join his community, um, it is, yeah, here is his community right here. And I will show you a little bit more. Sorry for the audio listeners, but uh, bear with me while I just, you know, show people. So it's, it's the Sifu Vision community. And, um, here it is. Voting has closed for Wonderland Improvement Proposal number 11. The proposal for Wonderland to make a $25 million investment into Seafood Vision passed over 89% of votes in favor. So it looks like Wonderland Protocol and Sifu have uh, made amends. I haven't really kept up to date on what's been going on in the community, so forgive me, uh, Seafood Vision people. Um, but um, yeah, and... Every quarter you get so what what the thing is is the Sifu token is backed at a specific point in time um, of the value. So if the value goes down, um, you can still redeem your Sifu token for a certain amount, even if the value of you know the the portfolio is lower at that point in time, something like that. But uh, it looks like Wonderland has put is now buying $25 million worth of Sifu tokens. Um, so that's interesting. So here's Sifu posting, we've successfully concluded our first redemption window. I'm very proud to report that users purchased nearly 1 million more Sifu than they redeemed. So right at this point, you can redeem your tokens um, or you can buy tokens at a specific price. Of the original $1 million, only 272, of the original 1 million tokens, only 272,000 remain. We're off to a fantastic start to a new quarter, which I hope to launch a new project, which will benefit Seafood Vision directly. Details will be announced soonish. So interesting, you know. Um, you know, it's it's very, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's very Ponzi-ish, you know. But I just, I don't invest stuff in, you know. I don't invest in stuff that I can't afford to lose. And I just think it's fun. I think the whole idea around the project is fun. Um, the community is fun. The, I like the way that they joke around. So, hey, you know, um, yeah. And uh, they, they, they take things very, seem to take things very lightheartedly. So anyway, let's go back to this article that I was reading. Uh, where, where did you go? Um, yeah, here it is. All right. So. 
Uh, DeFi protocol Wonderland has passed a governance vote to invest $25 million in the Sifu Vision token, a crypto project founded by Wonderland's former treasury manager known as Sifu. The vote passed today with 89% of the votes supporting the governance decision. This means that it's very likely that the Wonderland community will proceed to an over-the-counter deal to acquire $25 million worth of Sifu Vision tokens, more than half of the Sifu Vision's entire market cap of $42 million. These tokens will be linear, linearly vested for 12 months. Per the details provided in the governance propo- proposal, Sifu will make independent investments in the crypto space with these funds, um, hoping to make a return for Wonderland's treasury. Um, similar to Wonderland, similar to the Wonderland treasury manager, um, is the Sifu talking, it's my job to source the best possible deals and invest for maximum potential yield, Sifu commented on the deal on an earlier post on Wonderland's governance forum. The idea is that we trade and invest together and share in the profits. <clears throat> so the Wonderland community got split in half and the, they had people that supported Sifu. They said, we don't care what you did in the past. You've done a good job for Wonderland. And then you had people who were like, no, fire this dude. Um, so... Yeah, and then it goes on to another paragraph. Who is Sifu? In January of this year, Sifu was asked to leave from Wonderland after his real identity was revealed as Michael Patron, an ex-convict who was reportedly charged with identity theft in 2005. Patron is also known for co-founding the now-defunct Canadian crypto exchange called Quadriga CX. In 2018, Gerald Cotton, Sifu's business partner and the second co-founder of Quadriga CX, died on a holiday in India. After his death, it was found the exchange had a shortfall of almost $200 million. Um, A lot of people say Gerald Cotton faked his death, and I tend to believe that. Uh, There's amazing documentaries out there uh, on this. Um, So search Gerald Gerald Cotton, um, so G-E-R-A-L-D-C-O-T-T-E-N, and Quadriga, Q-U-A-D-R-I-G-A-C-X. It's a really exciting um, uh, story to read if you're into those types of stories. Um, And uh, you don't really... it just it leaves a lot more questions than you started with, but it's really an exciting story. And you know, who knows who if Gerald Cotton is sitting on some island somewhere now, just laughing at the rest of us with his two hundred million dollars. So anyway, months after getting fired from Wonderland, um, so once Sifu was exposed as you know the Michael Patron that was partnered with Jerry Cotton. Um, Wonderland fired him, uh, and he founded Sifu Vision, the token I was telling you about, a decentralized investment fund and a crypto token he named after himself that tracks his own portfolio. Um, in June, Sifu made a return to Wonderland and put up a governance proposal to the project's decentralized autonomous organization, the DAO, to invest in Sifu Vision native tokens. The proposal was put to a, a, a vote last week. So that's pretty cool, man. So, you know, Wonderland community um, you know, said... Enough with the gossip and the rumors. This guy is a part of our community. We're going to let him back. It doesn't matter who he was before. Um, so it's almost like a movie, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. It's like the, some some ex-assassin, you know, goes and retires from his assassin ways and goes lives in some village, you know, in, in the countryside of China. And, and then you know, it just so happens, you know, that... Um, some child discovers, you know, his assassin swords all tucked away, like buried in the woods. And then, you know, he brings it to the elders of the village and the the elders are like, Oh, we cannot have this assassin here, you know? And then suddenly the Chinese government or whatever finds out where, you know, this assassin is. And, and then it turns into this big deal. So they expel him from the village and then, you know, (laughs) and then he's, he's off. And then he's, you know, this assassin is, is doing good, things with his skills you know and protecting people and then it the word gets around in the countryside and the village hears about the good things that the assassin has been doing with his skills and protecting the innocent and then and then uh they welcome him back into the village and and then they 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 give the assassin you know encouragement and support in order to build up his skills and protect more and more people so i don't know not saying that you see who's protecting people but uh i just think it's an entertaining story it's it's it's, it's yeah <laughs> I'm a, I'm a sucker, man. I'm a total sucker. But uh, yeah, so that's that's that, man. Twenty five million dollars is going to be basically given to the Sifu Vision project, um, and uh, um, looks like Zero X Sifu 
um, is going to be the one stewarding that money to be able to invest. And like I said, regardless of the guy's past, the guy's an amazing investor. And, uh, um, you know, I have a couple of seafood tokens. I, I don't have like a huge bag of them. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I fell in love with the story, you know. And like I was talking about about the be- at the very beginning of this show, you know, with crypto projects, you, you see all the white papers and you end up a lot of times with this Boy Scout merit badge, sash full of all the different different merit badges because you you know you you fell in love with the story behind a bunch of projects well i know i've i've had to learn some discernment but this is one of those stories where i haven't really learned some discernment and you know hey man i'll, I'll get a couple see a seafood tokens and uh, just ride it and see where it goes and just follow the story man it, this that's what a lot of this stuff is for me you know yes it's innovation yes it's somewhat investment but it's also entertainment and it's like the best telenovela you've ever listen to or heard is the crypto market you know and so <laughs> there's always something going on anyway so yeah man just you know don't take things so seriously seriously man like seriously don't take things so seriously and just enjoy the time that we have on this earth enjoy the stories that pop up every day and uh, just ride the wave man you know just like <laughs> dude <laughs> life is freaking funny all right um so yeah <laughs> That being said, I've, I've gone on 26 minutes and uh, I'm going to go out for a run before I start my day. And um, yeah, man, I hope you guys enjoyed enjoy today. You know, it's a Wednesday. It's the middle of the week. Get some stuff done. But, uh, you know, don't forget to, to spend some time around the water cooler and the you know, metaphorical water cooler and enjoy the people around you and uh, the stories that come, you know, find some funny twist in the tragedy of, of everything that's happening. Um, so yeah. All right. Oh yeah. Uh, apparently also, ah, man, I was going to talk about this. Uh, they're, um, vesting the funds, but they're releasing them through this, uh, protocol called Sablier finance and Sablier finance is a protocol. Hold on. Um, I thought I was done. I had like, I have, um, three more minutes. Sablier finance is a protocol <clears throat> that allows projects and people, um, to distribute funds on kind of a water faucet type of way that trickle out. So if you have funds that you want to vest over time, um, instead of just multiple payouts, you know, and like every month and, and in the real world, you have to depend on some kind of executor to, to you know, execute those payments at this you know, reliable specified time and date. Um, so say that $25 million you wanted to trickle out over a period of three years. Well, you could lock it up in Sablier Finance, which is what I think they did. And uh, it just trickles out. And so you would connect your wallet and uh, it would just be like a little stream, a real time stream. And you're paid by the second or the minute or the hour or whatever it is. It's on a smart contract. And um, yeah, you know, so payday every day on Sablier, time leans money. Literally, as a worker, you see your earnings increasing in real time in the Sablier wallet. As an organization, our technology helps you get rid of the hassle of payroll admin. After a one-time deposit, our smart contracts will start streaming the money towards the payees without lifting you a finger again. So basically, you know, if say you had an employee and uh, you, you know, um, wanted to pay them for the job being done. Um, they had two weeks to complete the job. And instead of money up front, what you could do is say the job is worth $1,500, right? You could put the $1,500 in this protocol. They could connect their wallet. And then um, as they're doing the job for the next two weeks, you can go to the job site. You can keep tabs on it. And in the meantime, that money is trickling out little by little, you know, into their wallet. So you don't have to worry about upfront payments, you know, um, midterm payments and then final payments. The money is just trickling in there. And at the two weeks end, the, all the money is in your your um, uh, employee's wallet. And uh, you don't have to worry about anything more after that. Um, and then if you see that the job is not going well, um, that if, you know, things aren't, are taking way too long, or if you just see the job is being done terribly, you can stop the payment 
and you can stop the stream and they've gotten paid for the time that they have put into it. So I think it's a pretty genius idea. Um, so yeah, just something to think about. And I think that's what um, uh, Sifu Vision is doing with that $25 million. They're using this to uh, drip in. Um, I, I can't remember what they're doing with this, uh, but uh, I don't know how this came up, but I, I looked into it. I was like, oh, sadly, finance, what is this? So, yeah, I'll, I'll link all this in the video description. I just thought it was a pretty cool project, and I just wanted to talk about it real quick before I hopped off. Um, so, anyway, yeah, so enjoy today. Um, take care, and I will talk to you next time I talk to you. All right, later. Thank you for making it to the end of this program. If you actually like this content, give a thumbs up. And if you want to hear more, just hit the subscribe button. I'm available on YouTube, Odyssey, and BitChute, and on all the major podcasting platforms in audio version. Spotify specifically. If you would like to follow and leave a review, that would help a lot. I am also available on Twitter at EurekaJohn1. That's E-U-R-E-K-A John, J-O-H-N, and the number one. My DMs are always open. Feel free to shoot me a message. Thanks again.